Douglas Brenner, Brenner Shocks here in Southern California. I'm authorized to own sales and service for both automotive and motorcycle. I think I'm the only one in the country authorized to, to do that. And I'm exclusively Owen, so I don't work on anything else. Um, I'm a shock tech, not a guru. I've done this for over 30 years. And also, I know it's hard to believe because I am so young and handsome. <laughs> um, I've been racing for over 50 years and uh, doing shocks and putting them in my car and seeing in competitive on-track situations uh, what I've done. I'm not sitting on the internet um, or just <laughs> on YouTube. I call them on the internet jabber wankers telling you what to do when they have no real experience um, uh, with actual racing or with uh, real competitive drivers, so be careful. I also know I'm not going to be an internet sensation, <laughs> so I make my money uh, selling and servicing uh, Olin's products. So um, give me a call if you need service or sales. You might as well buy it from somebody who actually knows inside and out the product and not a, a, a internet internet reseller. I'm as close as UPS, FedEx, etc. Uh, if you need service or bring them over. I'm in Southern California. I'm available seven days a week to, uh, to serve your needs. So um, give me a call if you need something and uh, I can compete with any price on Olin's products. Uh, if you, any legitimate price you have, I can do the same or better and you might as well buy it from somebody who knows the product. So let's see what we have this week. Okay, so here's a piston and here's a ceiling shim. And what happens is, just in case I didn't make it clear, which was probably the case, this port is open to oil, but it's blocked with a shim on this side. And this port is open to oil, but it's blocked with the shim on this side. Okay, we're gonna start out with bleeds, which is pretty much low speed damping and also it denotes when the shim stack goes off so it affects the damping all the way up the curve. You don't necessarily have to have a bleed but then the forces initially are a lot so we'll see that right away in this video. Um, these are fixed orifices and this piston goes up and down through oil. As the oil goes through those ports it takes a certain amount of force depending on velocity to uh, force the oil through there. And the reason you can't just have one size port is that the force it takes to force oil through any given orifice goes up to the square of the velocity. So you'd either have no damping or very little. Then at a very narrow range, you'd have probably the proper damping. And then at some point, it'd be way over damped and then the shaft would basically stop because it couldn't flow any, any more oil through there. And what we want is a variable orifice. And that's accomplished by putting springs, having big ports, this port, will flow enough oil to handle pretty much the whole range of what the shock will see, including high speed. But when you put a um, shim over there, shim springs, and you stack them, and there's all kinds of nuances which we'll get into. And with shims, you can change infinitely what the damping looks like. And you can tune it and tailor it to what you might want or you might think you want your damping to be. So let's get into bleeds. And a bleed is a circuit that bypasses the shims on the piston. One of the bleeds would be the, in the, we talked about piston rings, there's a little break in the piston ring. So that's a small bleed. Okay, uh, let's start out here and we'll look at what it looks like with no bleed. The bleed is closed. Tons of hysteresis. And also, way too much low speed damping. What's low speed? Whatever you want it to be. Usually it's uh, up to maybe two inches a second velocity. Maybe up to four is mid-range and the rest is high speed. But it's, it's whatever you want it to be. It's a subjective term. But I think that most of the grip you have is down here in the low speed range. So if you take a straight line here and you go kind of follow as if as if the low speed were uh, linear damping you could see it's in the stratosphere 
if this were linear damping, you'd almost it'd almost be stopped at some point at high speed, and it would certainly stop my dyno. <laughs> so, uh, so then let's um, open it up ten clicks from close ten open. Well, you can see now a little less hysteresis. Um, if you did your straight line again. Uh, it'd still be over damped at low speed, but it'd be a little better. Still way too much damping where the grip is. And then let's uh, have the bleed all the way open. Look at that. Hardly any hysteresis. Um, pretty linear. You know, this is pretty much what the damping would be if it were linear. It's not way up here in the atmosphere. Also, you can see the difference in compression and rebound, even though we're turning what's purported to be a rebound knob, and that's because the bleed is open. And there's a little history. So this is probably mostly gas pressure in the shock. Okay, let's examine the difference in using your bleed or using shimming to obtain a certain level of damping. So here is our valving number one, the .20 shim stack with the bleed open, which we've seen. And then here is that same shim stack with the bleed at minus 10. In other words, closed down and then open 10 clicks. And you can see the hysteresis and you can see digressive damping, the too much damping in the low end. But let's say you're using your adjusters and you keep adjusting and it feels better because up here, you know, maybe on turn in or braking, the more damping help. You could leave it here. You could say, oh, okay, that feels better. But then your low speed damping's not so good. Your grip is going to be compromised. You know, your turn ins or braking might be good, but in the middle of the corner, maybe it's not so good. What you might want to do is open up the bleeds and then I've reshimmed. Here's a picture of the shims that I put in. I basically just put in a 0.25 shim stack which is one thickness up, the same diameter shims and uh, pretty much the same look to it. And then I open up the bleed and here's what you come up with. Now you can see forces are about the same here. You know, you've increased the force, but you've get, got it a bit more linear and also with way less hysteresis. And same in the rebound, although this looks wonky. If you take your straight line and you run it down there, that baby's almost linear. And you can see here how much the force is and how digressive it is. So you can see you've got better forces. There's a little dip here. But these things can be cured with a few shims here and there. There's where you have to kind of go in and reshim a little. You always want to run your bleeds as open as you can get them and reshim. If you're testing, you can turn those knobs. It gets better. Go back and reshim. Now we'll examine another kind of bleed. These are shaft jets, just like the open shaft jet we had, and we saw when you manipulate the needle valve, how it changes. Okay, these are shaft jets too, but they're check valves. Uh, most so-called professional shocks have a check valve that's open one way and closed the other. They're usually open and rebound and closed in compression. There's different reasons for uh, doing this. One's to isolate compression from rebound. Usually I see that when there's a remote reservoir with what they call a compression adjuster, which I guess it is. It, it sees the oil that the shaft's displacing. But all this goes one step further. This one here is a check, same thing, open and rebound and kind of closed in compression. There's a little piston in here and in rebound, when the oil's flowing this way, it pushes this piston. There's a little spring on the top. And these slots in here allow the oil to bleed out without restriction. Because if you add up how big these kind of ports are, you'd see that they don't really restrict the flow. But in compression, this piston has a hole in it. So when the oil comes in this way, it's restricted, but it's still allowed to flow. And Olin's has a bunch of them. There's different lengths and different basic sizes. There's a 3.2 millimeter hole, and they're a little shorter. They, they're probably for different size pistons. This one here is a 05666-24. This one, of course, is an 05666-00, which means it's closed. 
and this has a 2.4 millimeter hole. So in rebound, it's bleeding four millimeters worth of oil, and in compression, it's bleeding 2.4 millimeters of oil. And they go from close to a 0.5 millimeter, then to a 0.8 millimeter, and then every 0.2 millimeters up to uh, this 0.24. So there's quite a range. And this way you can either completely isolate one circuit from the other, or you can isolate it kind of. And we'll go in later. It's a huge explanation of why you might want to uh, use a check valve at all, and then why you might want a variable check valve. But another great product from Olin's. Okay, I've done some changes. I've changed the bleeds a couple times. And let's see what we got. Here is the 5666-00, which is a one-way valve. It's closed in compression and open in rebound. So it looks pretty much like everything we've done, even the open bleed when it's closed. Well, now you can see that the compression is pretty much the same, but the rebounds change. So it's, it's isolated the compression, so nothing changes there and allowed you to change rebound only. So now when you turn the rebound knob you're getting rebound and you're not affecting compression like you are when you have the open bleed you're affecting both. Alright now let's see what we have with the 5666-24. So basically you got a in rebound you got a four millimeter bleed and in compression you have a two 0.4 millimeter bleed. So there's a variable. It's not closed. So here is closed. It should look like every other one closed because the needle's closing off the jet. So no, so you're relying on the shims to make all the damping. So here is open. Now you can see that there's a difference in compression. Unlike the full check valve, when we open it up, it allows oil to flow on the compression side. And the rebound has a lot of adjustability because the bleed's open. So you're getting pretty much the same rebound adjustment. And you're also getting some compression adjustment, but not as much as if the bleed was completely open both ways. Let me get rid of this here. Goodbye. Good luck. So you can see the red is the 5666-24. And the green is the open bleed, the, the jet just completely open. So you can see there's a little more compression damping with the uh, Dash 24 because it's got 2.4 millimeters of a bleed in the compression direction, which is a little more restrictive than 4 millimeters. So you can clearly see the difference here. All right, now we're going to talk about bleeds, how you do a bleed if you don't have any adjustments from outside the shock. Various people have tried various things. Um, there were guys with, maybe even they do it on Olin's, where they just drill a hole through the port, a little 40, well, you know, like four 40 thousandths holes is what I need, and then the, then the piston is only good for that bleed. And there's some aftermarket pistons for not for Olin's, where they have a on in one place around here they've got a little um, a jet that you drill a certain size and that probably works except I'm I'm not comfortable with the bleed just one bleed being offset probably is fine but it just doesn't look right to me I'd rather have some balance but again that's just me that could be perfectly okay so initially uh, if you watched uh, my video on pistons this is a old, pretty old, like original Olin's piston, and they did bleeds by putting holes in the shims. Different size, here's one bleed, and uh, here's another with two holes. Uh, so, so that's a bleed, and it's a leak. You know, the other, it, it, we were watching other bleeds that go around the piston. It can go through the piston. Um, a bleed is a leak. That's just a leak. <laughs> So, now, let's say we have this kind of standard Olin's piston. Maybe we have it in a CCJ or some of the different shocks that Olin's makes that aren't adjustable from the outside. They're all adjustable. 
So let's talk about how we can do bleeds. How do we accomplish a bleed? Well, there's a bunch of ways, and I'll just go through them and we'll see. When you're not making a lot of damping, when you're going up towards a 0.8 or 0.9 or 1 to 1, or even in some BMW cars, 1.06, better than 1 to 1. In other words, the shock moves more than an inch when the wheel moves an inch. You don't want to make much damping because when you calculate it at the wheel, you want the, the proper damping at the wheel. But then when you have like some of the motorcycles, I think MotoGP from my information I have is somewhere between 0.4 and 0.5 motion ratio on the rear. You need to make a lot of damping and it's pretty hard to not have hysteresis and maintain bleeds when you got to make a lot of damping because we only have a 0.38 shim. I guess we can double up, triple up shims. You know, it depends on the damping you want to make, what bleed you need. So here's a couple ways. One way to make a bleed is to take a shim and you can uh, vary the bleed by the thickness of that shim and put the ceiling shim above it and now there's a little space under here that um, before the shim stack starts to move it can bleed out of there and that's that's one way to do it and that's fine it works especially fine when you don't want to make much damping then another way is Olin's has these slotted shims if you have a piston with four ports, they have four port ones too. And they come in the same thicknesses as regular shims. 0.1 of a millimeter up to 0.38. So there's a couple ways to deal with this. This way you can, you can put a ceiling shim over it and you'll look there's a little slot in here. And depending on the thickness of the slotted shim, thicker is more bleed, thinner is less bleed. You can start controlling bleed like that. The other way, if you really need a lot of bleed, you can uh, put different shims above it. And you can see there's a little bleed coming out the side. So by putting a different size um, shim, you can open or close that slot. <laughs> um, there you see it's pretty big. So that's another way to control bleed. So that's about it on how to control a bleed on a shock that has no outside adjustment for bleed. And you can do different variations on this and usually get just the bleed that you like. And it doesn't really matter which side the bleed is on, compression or rebound, because it sees it both ways. So it's a leak in both directions. Okay, there you have it. Everything you need to know about bleeds, but we're afraid to ask. <laughs> Uh, next week I'm going to uh, get into shims and what shims do and uh, how we manipulate shims. So uh, hit the subscribe, hit the bell, and uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope um, I'm explaining things that are interesting to you. Let me know uh, what you think. Okay, until next time, thanks.